And here we are guys, we are now using Android from a USB stick on this B-Link mini PC. Hey guys, welcome back. So after my last video, I received about 300 comments from people, just so many questions about the USB streaming stick, um, everything from can we get the full Play Store on there? How do we boot up on Macintoshes? Can we use a USB stick on our Playstations and stuff like that? So I thought I'd make this quick video today and answer some of those questions. And I think one of the questions was, can you actually do any kind of gaming on here? And as we can just see right now, guys, I'm actually playing 8-Ball Pool through my USB stick. And I've just pointed to white. So in this video today, let me answer the common questions from my last video. And if there's anything that I miss out, then you guys can leave me a comment below and I'll get them for next time. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. So question number one, can I access the entire Play Store through this USB stick? And the quick answer for that is yes. If you see here, we can see that the Phoenix OS does actually come with Play Store pre-installed. So if I double click on this, and here we can see the entire Play Store and any application I want to download, I can click on something. Let's try this one over here. Click on install. And actually then start downloading that directly to my device. Now, if you are worried about your safety, you can always create a new Gmail account just for Play Store, just for your testing and use it on that. On all of my devices now, I do use a separate account for accessing the Play Store. So if there's any issue with my account or if there's any problems, it doesn't affect my main account. Okay, we can see I've just used the Google Play Store to download a Red Ball 4. Is that going to open? Okay, that seems to have started okay. Uh, is that going to work? Yes, it is. And we can see that's working absolutely fine. Um, I've no idea what I'm doing. Now, of course, just because one game works doesn't mean that all games are going to work. So it's going to be a case of trial and error, but definitely we can confirm we do have full access to the entire Play Store, any application, any utility, any kind of game we can definitely download. But again, you will have to check to make sure if that thing is compatible for use. The next question is also quite a common one, and that was, can I copy files or media or you know music from my own computer onto the USB drive and then access that content directly through the Android Phoenix OS? And again, the answer to that is just yes. So here we can see on my PC, I've plugged in my Phoenix created USB drive and we can see these are the four folders you get on the USB drive. And if I want to add any other content to here, all I need to do is just drag and drop the contents into the folder. So here, for example, if I just copy across um, this test video, if I copy this test picture, that's on there. Let me now also copy this uh, test video. So literally just drag and drop your content onto the USB drive. And that content can be, you know, music, it can be videos, and even your application APK files. So wherever you downloaded anything from, you can copy those across to the USB drive. And the next time you boot with that USB stick, you'll be able to access all of that content. So let me now boot into Phoenix and let's see if we can access those three files. And let's open up the browser. Let's go to the USB drive. And here we can just see guys, so this is the picture that I copied across. And these are two test videos. So if I open them up, so this is now actually opening this picture up from that USB drive. That's working fine. I think this is my tester intro. And that's also working great, guys. So definitely if you want to copy any kind of maybe movies or any kind of music, you can copy those directly onto the USB drive and access them inside your Android Phoenix OS. The next question was, can I use casting? So if I do install a streaming application or a certain application, if that application has built in casting, can I use that through Phoenix OS? And again, the answer to that is yes. So if I just open up one of these popular applications and we can see at the top, we do have a cast button. If I click on that, and here we can just see that it's able to find my shield. So whichever devices you have in your house which do support casting or casting to, you'll be able to see them in the list and then cast your content onto that. So that part is definitely working okay on the Phoenix OS. Now probably the most common question was that you were able to make the USB stick using the Phoenix installer. But unfortunately, when you do plug that into your laptop or your desktop or any other device that you have, it just doesn't seem to start okay. Um, 
by the way, so I've got my video playing on at two times speed for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> In case you're wondering why that's going really fast. But um, so there are a couple of things we have to explain here. So firstly, the link that I shared before was only for 64-bit CPUs. So if you have an older laptop or an older desktop that maybe only has a 32-bit CPU, then that link is not going to work. Now to resolve that issue, I've now added a second link on my website. So if you do have a slightly older machine, do try the 32-bit one instead. The second thing to mention is the fact that your USB drive does have to be formatted as FAT32. So you cannot use NTFS or any other file system. So once you have got your drive formatted correctly, you run the Phoenix installer, make sure that it completes OK. We then need to make a change on your device. Now, for me to explain that, let me show the process on two separate laptops and I'll show you how we can get both of them to boot from the USB drive so we can access the Phoenix OS operating system. Let's jump over to my table. Okay, so you've got your USB stick. You made sure you did format that as FAT32. You then use the Phoenix installer to install the image onto here. How do we now get our laptop or our desktops or any of our other x86 based devices to actually boot from this? Well, as we can see on my HP laptop, when I plug this in, if I turn that on, if I keep pressing the escape key, we can see I actually get a startup menu. Now, I think that might be a bit hard for you to see, so let me just zoom into that. And we can now see a couple of options, including boot device options. So for me, it's F9. Let me press that now. And we can now see I have a boot menu asking me which device do I want to boot from. Do I want to boot from the USB hard drive, from the notebook hard drive, or wherever else? Because Phoenix OS is on our USB drive, I'm going to select the USB option, press enter. Give that a second and that will then boot into Phoenix OS for us. Now one of the other things I didn't mention in my previous video was you do need to disable the secure boot in your BIOS and I'll show you how you can do that in just a second but as we can see guys once the device knows that you're going to boot from the USB drive it boots into Android OS without any issues whatsoever. So that's okay on this one let's now try the other laptop. So this is a cheap Chinese laptop let me power that on so let me plug in the USB stick first and Okay, that's gone in. Now I've not made any changes to this, so let me just turn that on and let's see what happens. And just like the other laptop, this is also running Windows 10 on the internal hard drive. And we can see guys, even though that the USB drive is plugged in, this is going to default and boot into Windows 10. So how do we fix that? And let that just start up for a second. So the two things we're going to change is in the BIOS, firstly, we're going to say, make sure that the secure boot is disabled. Once that's done, we're going to change the boot order to make sure that this device always boots from the USB first if it's plugged in. If it's not plugged in, it will then go back to the default internal hard disk. Okay, let me just shut that down. Okay, let's now power that back on. And this time, as soon as it turns on, I'm going to keep on pressing the escape key. Now, on some computers, it may be the F9 key or the F10 key, or it may even give you a prompt on the screen asking you, press this particular key, this particular function key, to get into the BIOS. And here we can see on this device, if I just keep pressing the escape key, it takes me straight into there. So let's click on no for this. So inside the BIOS, we're looking for the secure boot setting. So let's go over to uh, security. And here we can see in security, we have secure boot. Let's go down onto that. Let's open that up. And we can see on my device, the secure boot is disabled. So make sure yours is the same. Once you've done that, you then want to find the settings for the boot order, which we can see on this device is under the boot menu. And here we can just see it guys. So the boot option number one, which is the priority or the primary, we can see is the Windows boot manager. And the boot option two is the SanDisk, which is the USB drive. So all we need to do is just make sure that the first boot option is actually the USB drive. So if I go to that now, and it says here to change the options, press minus. But again, it may be different in your BIOS, but essentially you just want to change the option like that. And we can see now that the boot option number one is the SanDisk, the USB drive. And option number two is the standard Windows internal drive. So once you've confirmed that, let's go over to save. And let's now save those changes. Click on yes. I'm hoping now once this restarts and we can see straight away, guys, it's now going to boot from this first. So I'll press enter on that. Give that a second and I should then start loading Phoenix OS from the USB drive onto this uh, Chinese laptop. And there we have it, that's working absolutely fine. And probably thinking about it, that really was probably the most common comment in my last video. And to be fair, that probably was my fault that I didn't go into enough details on exactly how we can get the stick or the USB stick to boot on our devices. And now that we know that, firstly, you have to make sure that the secure boot is disabled. 
And secondly, we have to make sure that the boot order has the USB drive as the highest priority or as the number one priority. Once you have that, that should then boot up on your device as long as your device does run x86 architecture. Now one quick caveat on that, and I have tested this about three or four times. Here we have a Kingston USB drive. It is USB 3, it's 32 gig in storage. Now I formatted this a couple of times. I've installed Phoenix OS with the installer, but no matter what I do guys, on two or three different laptops, I just cannot get this device to boot. Just to show you that it can actually be your USB drive that's not compatible, which is why your device is not booting up from it. So let me just plug that in. So same laptop, same settings. The only thing we're changing is the USB drive. And let's see if that now boots up okay. And the BIOS is already set to boot from the USB drive. Let's see what it does. Okay, so it's thinking about here. Is that going to work? It's not. So you can see guys, even on the same machine, one USB stick may work and one may not work. So if your one is consistently not working, I do advise trying another one. And I do recommend these particular SanDisk USB drives. And I will leave a link in the video description if you want to buy the same one as me. Okay, so next question, where else can I use this portable USB streaming stick? And just looking through the comments guys, people are asking, can I use this on a TV? The answer is no. Can I plug this into a PlayStation or an Xbox? The answer is no. Uh, can I plug this into my Nvidia Shield or a Fire Stick? And the answer is no. So where else can we plug this that's not a laptop or a desktop? Well here guys, we can see is my B-Link mini PC. And we can just see here that it does have an Intel x86 CPU. So in theory, there's no reason why I cannot plug this USB stick onto this mini PC, which is running Windows 10, but now start enjoying Android. So let me test that theory out now. Uh, let me just plug that into the USB 3 port. There we go. Okay, that's now plugged in. Let's now power that on. And let's just see what happens with that. So this is my B-Link mini PC. Okay, we can see B-Link there. Okay, and once again, we can see here, press F7 to enter the boot menu. And that's exactly what we want to do, guys, because if we don't do that, and we can see that's taken us straight into Windows 10, which we don't want. So let me just reboot that now. And let's see now if we can actually get this mini PC from B-Link to boot from our USB drive and actually start using Android on this. So let's wait for the startup message. There we go, press F7, so F7. Here we go, and once again, guys, we can see now we have a boot menu. And once again, this boot menu is asking you, where do you want this device to boot up? From the internal Windows boot manager, or here we can see the SanDisk partition one. So let me go down into that. Let's click on that. And is that going to work? There we are guys, so we're now going to potentially be booting Phoenix OS from the USB drive onto this B-Link mini PC. Is that going to work? I think it is guys, and just while you're waiting, if you want to see more tutorials on the second generation Fire TV Cube or the Nvidia Shield Pro, or any of the Amazon devices, or also the TiVo 4K stream, which I hear is coming to me on Saturday, then Please do like this video guys and also think about subscribing because that really is the best way you can help support my channel. And here we are guys, we are now using Android from a USB stick on this B-Link mini PC. Is that working properly? That is working, but I can see here guys, the network is not working. Okay, so I've just noticed that the Wi-Fi is not actually working on this. So there's obviously limitations on Phoenix OS and, and which Wi-Fi cards it supports. So whichever Wi-Fi card is inside this, I don't think it's compatible with uh, Phoenix OS. Uh, but can I still do some gaming like this? Let's take a shot like that. And great, the white goes straight in, so... Well, that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. If you did find this video useful, then do give it a thumbs up. If you have any other questions regarding Phoenix OS, then please do leave me a comment below. Other than that, let me just say a massive thanks to all of my new members on my channel. Really appreciate your support, guys. And if anyone else wants to sign up, then do have a look out for that join button, and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.